Not everything ages well, like a fine cheese or a fine wine. Some things, video games in particular, age pretty badly, actually. For example, revisit a game that you used to love, where in your mind the graphics were crispy, the landscapes were vast and realistic, but when you boot it up, you realize that it looks like a steaming hot pile of pixelated garbage. Our imagination and nostalgia really do seem to fill in the gaps in our memory. Graphics aside, though, there are games where even the gameplay and mechanics leave us wondering what the f*** we saw in them in the first place. Games where I'd go so far as to say they're not even worth the time or money investment to get a remaster or remake for. Hey there! Don't hate me, but who are you again? I'm the new park manager. You can have some real fun and increase park happiness by helping teenagers flirt. Once convinced, the teen lets you take them over to go search for a sweetie. Thankfully, in this case, Silent Hill 2 beautifully, masterfully translates into a 2024 horror experience. You could say that there's many moments within the game that left me shivering my timbers. Oh. Ah! Oh. This is the creepiest shit I've ever seen in the entirety of my life. Grab it! Ah! I played enough zombies to play this game, baby. How does Silent Hill 2 hold up decades later? To answer this question, I'm gonna go over Silent Hill 2 as a standalone experience. By that, I mean how it holds up as a game released in 2024, not just as a remake of a fan favorite. There's not gonna be any major spoilers throughout this whole video, so don't worry about that. I came into this game practically blind. I had seen snippets of the original game while growing up, and I was obviously familiar with the all-famous Pyramid Head, because like, freaking everyone knows what he looks like, or at least where he's from. But aside from that, it was essentially my very first playthrough of any Silent Hill game, which which I think gave me an unbiased look into the game or an unbiased opinion into the game as a standalone in 2024. I didn't have the nostalgia glasses fogging up my feelings. I truly experienced this in the way that it was meant to be experienced. Shitting myself and confused as fuck the whole time. This is truly one of the most engaging stories that I have experienced in a game in a long time. The premise of receiving a letter from your wife who's been dead croaked for the past three years is an immediate hook. Past that, the characters that you meet, the ones that aren't meaty barf bags or a pair of legs trying to kill you are weird and unsettling and although they only appear in short spurts throughout the game, they're a nice addition to the overall mystery. Learning about them and their backstories helps you eventually understand your purpose within Silent Hill and essentially gives you, I don't know, like trauma buddies, I guess. <laughs> hey, I'm here. I'm not having a good time. Are you? No. Yeah. There isn't much more I can say without spoiling the story, but I'll leave it at this. The pacing is done really well, the cinematics are nice breathers between tense gameplay sections, but they don't overstay their welcome, and the ending, depending on which one you get, I guess, is satisfying enough to bring a lot of the story full circle, but it does leave a lot to interpretation as well. It's one of those that has you like googling what the f is going on in this game while the credits are rolling. The gameplay itself, I would say, is very simple as far as combat goes. You have your hit, your dodge, and your shoot button. That's about it. But where where it actually shines is in the map, the exploration and the puzzle mechanics. Each area you enter represents a new set of challenges. You read through notes, pictures, writing on the walls, and pick up various other clues to progress through the game. One of the coolest features that I personally thought was very well done portion of the game was the fact that the difficulty settings aren't dumb. What I mean by that is many games will do the basics. In normal, you have 50 HP, in hard, you have 30. In normal, it takes four shots to kill somebody, in hard, it takes seven. Although Silent Hill does do that. It's not like exempt from that. It takes it a step further and kind of shows a little bit more innovation in the subject. Basically, it changes the entire game. If you watch a playthrough on normal, it's a completely different experience than on hard. The puzzles are overall more confusing. Letters you find are written in ways that are much less obvious what you need to do next. Riddles are harder. Codes require extra math. It's it's just nuts. It's definitely more of a traditional survivor horror or... <laughs> survivor horror why is that hard to say it's definitely more of a traditional survivor horror for that what survival horror game when you play it on hard difficulty but f that give me my 30 health vials bro you can keep your one piece of ammo and one health file for the entire game over there with the tryhards survival horror survival horror game it's a survival horror game <laughs> 
The atmosphere in this game is fantastic. Every aspect comes together to create this unsettling, unnerving world. The visuals are really nice, combining dark areas with heavy details throughout the maps like ripped walls, fleshy, nasty, gooey crap everywhere, bugs crawling around, the fog. I mean, the fog is a staple of these games at this point. And the ability to take the same area and make it look vastly different throughout different time portions of the game. Visuals aside, this game really stands out with the sound design as well. Eerie music combined with crackling snotty, I don't even know how to describe the noises the enemies make, random environment noises like knocking, distant screaming, whispering, and the most terrifying of them all, dead silence. It's just the perfect concoction of sounds f***ing your ears. Lastly, I brought them up earlier in the story, but I want to say again that the characters you meet throughout the game also contribute to the unsettling atmosphere. They're just like so confusing and psychotic or sociopath, I don't, I don't know the word for it, but it just makes your skin crawl the way that you interact with these people. Really the only bad things I have to say about the game is the performance was dog shit for PC. The frame rate drops were out the ass. I don't ever think I actually got steady frames. Like it would not hit 60 FPS. And if I'm being picky, sometimes the hit registration for both myself and the enemies was a bit way the fuck off. But again, I really had to jog my noggin there to find things I didn't like about it because essentially I did fall in love with this game. Now that we've gone over the remake, how does Silent Hill 2 in 2024 compare to the original? What do those iconic moments look like then versus now? If you're interested, you can click the video that's popping up here on the screen. Don't forget to make your like sacrifices for the algorithm gods and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.